Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. You, your homework was shit. Not, I haven't seen tonight, the night before, so redo it. See, I actually read your shit. And happy, now, again, I know you don't have to be literate to get out of school now. I know that. But it's still shocking to me. It just is. It's the written word of, is so incorrectly put down on paper now. Uh, we got a bunch of, oh, no, we, I got a bunch of emails in again. Oh, I've been meaning to call you or tell you about this, and I, I flew to the moon, and I jacked up 42,000 times, and I did this, and I had, I've had two more kids. Blah, blah, okay. Uh, but I haven't had time to go through them all. <clears throat> and it really is annoying that unless my feed, is that the right word? Feed on YouTube. And they, oh, I haven't told Penny about my successes and or some of their failures. Um, a couple of things, that we're going to talk about the 60-40 more, but um, some of the kids, even though, for those that went to the one day, the only time I've given the seminar outside the castle uh, this century, I put the 60-40 in the meathead things on the, on the, on the screen. Okay? And uh, I left them on the screen a long, long time. A bunch of people took pictures of it. Fine. Um, but they still get it wrong. So we're going to start this morning with a 60-40. And even though I, I normally do this the last day, I'm going to do it today and tomorrow again. Because somehow, and I would recommend you take a picture of it. Because if that's the you know, it's pretty bloody simple, but I would recommend that you take a picture of it. Excuse me. Um, but a lot of kids are saying... Um, that uh, it has been easier during Corona, which I already knew. And some of the kids have been candid enough to say, I have taken the foot off the accelerator, and it's still easy. And so I, I don't answer these emails. Uh, but if I were to answer them, and if you hear my feed from this, is then why in the bloody hell don't you? If it's easier during Corona, why don't you put your foot on the accelerator harder? Because they have low expectations, that's why. Some of them, the kids, the you, have already, just during the 18 months of corona, whatever it's last, have made their goals, lifetime goals. I'm going to say it again, slow. In the 18 or so months that corona has lasted, they've made their lifetime goals. So some have just taken their foot completely off the accelerator. That's how low their goals, well, <clears throat> I'm assuming, and the assumptions the mother of all fuck-ups, I'm assuming their goals were uh, low. Because if you accomplish your lifetime goals in 18 months, it couldn't have been much. And when we talk about goals and affirmations, after we talk about the 60-40 bottle, um, the, um, but they have, you know, and default's a bitch. And if you have no good role models, and you didn't listen to me, you're the average of the five people you hang around with, and the kids are still living at home, and all the things they did, and they, they made, you know, a, a few million bucks uh, or maybe a couple million bucks. I don't know how low their goals were or how poor their role models are. I'm pretty sure I know how poor their role models are. And then um, then you have um, wind up the QLA dead floating around the Titanic boat. Because making a couple million dollars, it's, 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 it's asinine to have even attempted QLA. And I haven't filtered through to see how many of those attended the seminar and only made a couple million dollars. I'll be sick to my stomach if those kids are right me because I don't remember the names. It's just like, you're just, like I confused who didn't do the homework because I just, you know, y'all, when I tell you, even the black, brown, yellow, Chinaman, fucking Hindu, you all look alike to me. It's just, you know how when, um, you see on a camera, and they blur the face out of the children when the, the, the cameraman's taking a picture? You know how they blur the face out? That's what I see. That's it. I don't see anything. I recognize Marcus's head, because I've known him for 10, 11 years. But uh, other than that, you just all look like a little blur. And familiarity breeds contempt. And I learned 25, 26 years ago, when I was into this one or two years, um, when I might have cared a modicum 
about you as a person, I realize that that's, I'm, you know, I'm pissing in the wind. Not, not just because you're going to let me down and not, not perform for yourself, but, uh, you, you know, uh, I can't keep track of, you know, these, these thousands of people. Um, the um, uh, last night you saw what? Hmm? Alpha male, Oxford. That's the only time I've ever heard him where he didn't swear. Um, he said at the beginning, if I remember correctly, uh, he was nervous he, because he was nervous because he knew this was going to be on fucking YouTube forever. Um, but, and Steve is uh, the opposite of you. He's at my end of the continuum. Comments, questions about Mr. Balmer, who is now the largest shareholder of Microsoft, I might add. Yes, sir. He's, at some points during his speech, he sounded bitter. Did he get thrown out as a CEO? No. Or did he yeah. leave? Well, it depends who you, you listen to. He says he didn't. Um, the, um, but a major shareholder, of which he's one, and when he left uh, Microsoft, Gates was still a major shareholder, still is a major shareholder, uh, but they wanted a new regime. Um, and he talked about a one-trick pony, two-trick pony, three-trick pony, etc. I pray to Allah that you just have one trick pony. I don't give a fuck if you ever have a second trick pony. Just one's good enough for me, okay? Um, and they, they wanted a new regime. Now, I don't know if that's true or not because uh, he's never complained. Uh, he, he did sound a little um, bitter, maybe disappointed, because um, I think he, he believed he had other things to do. But I'm told he's happy as Larry not being there. And when, when he uh, fucked up the valuation of uh, professional basketball teams by paying so much for the uh, Clippers, um, the, the worry was because he, keeps his, he can't keep his hands off, he's an on-hands manager. They were worried that he would get involved in the, man, the actual management of the basketball team, excuse me, which apparently he hasn't. Um, but he may be, he may have been. But he had a great run. He had a great run. Um, he might have stayed a little too long. But it's tough to leave. Normally they escort you out with punji sticks, needles in your eyes on fire, normally. Any other uh, comments or questions about Mr. Balmer? Yes, sir, in the back. He also mentioned that the mo one of the toughest decisions have been about people, to hire people, fire people, promote people. It's always been somehow the affecting the whole business if you do the wrong, wrong way. <laughs> business would be great without people. Without the management of individuals, personalities, egos, whatever, and the the and the other reason the QLA model is a stepping stone. You manage four people in the beginning, then twelve, then eighteen, and then Andres has got four hundred now. And hopefully you learn along the way. Hopefully you pick some people that are worth a damn along the way. Um, Andres, I believe, is looking for his replacement in one of these people. We haven't found that yet. Um, because, you know, and it's about leadership. Management skews into leadership after you have three people or five people. And again, most of the individuals that start, not just the QLA model, any model, have little or no leadership skills because they haven't been put in a position of leadership. And I believe the, the corporate world has got it all ass backwards, but um, because you don't get promoted necessarily because of your leadership or management skills, you get promoted, that's just one of the things they check in the box. And you get promoted, one, how big a kiss ass you are. Um, uh, two, uh, if um, you happen to be in a, a position um, that is void, a lot of women get promoted above their grade because they're gals. A lot of black people get promoted. A lot of uh, Mexicans. Uh, I never got promoted for that because nobody ever knew I was a fucking Mexican. Um, a lot of uh, various ethnicities get promoted because you're supposed to have a, a potpourri of color, like a rainbow. Um, and um, 
and now transgenders, I would imagine, although I haven't been in management since that has been in effect. And so they're not, there's a lot of empty suits or skirts or pantsuits or, uh, on the promotion ladder, and especially in civil service, um, policemen, firemen, and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, it's just, although a woman, what was it, a couple years ago, her and her partner were having lunch or dinner in their patrol car, and somebody comes up behind him and shoots them both in the head, if I remember correctly. Then the gal pulls her partner out, turns fire, blah, 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 pulls about a gal, gets him up against a wall, protect him, and then runs after her. That's unusual. I'm sure the female fire people and police people, took, that's the poster gal. That's how you're supposed to do it. But women don't have the same upper body strength. I don't give a shit. Some do, the, the gorilla gals. But for the most part, they don't. So I'm sure they're using that for advertising. So and the worst thing, in my judgment, in the corporate world, is to promote vis-a-vis -vis seniority. You may have 10 years experience, you've got one year 10 times. Doesn't mean you're worth a shit. And seniority is one of the most often used uh, metrics for promotion. And it's maybe you write 10% of the time or 20% of the time. With the theory that if you're there 82 years, you learn something. But normally, when you're there more than 10 years or so, uh, you stop learning. I had, a, um, I had the misfortune of taking my mother-in-law about 10 years ago with my wife on a uh, cruise around half the world or some bullshit. And we were in Australia. I forget where we saw. No, Zealand, New Zealand. Anyway, where they have that big round thing in the middle of the, there's a big round mound out in the middle of the, the, the desert. Well, anyway, we're there and we're having a campfire and the, the mosquitoes were as big as bats and the bats were as big as crows and we're trying to eat our food, and there were two couples. Sally's sitting next to me, I'm sitting here. There's a couple with two children sitting here. Uh, they were both, he's from Bulgaria, and she's from it, it, uh, Lithuania or something, and they have two teenage kids, and then there's another young couple from America, in their late 20s, early 30s. And the two kids are listening, they don't want to be there, and they're both talking how it, to take advantage of the statutory leave policies in Australia. They spent the whole motherfucking dinner talking about you can cross sick days over these days, over mandatory days, and you can e eke out three more days off. Uh, and, and Sally is kicking me. Well, I want to, I don't know if you can show, but anyway, the last, on the boat we just got off, but I have a, a, a big bloody mark here from Sally kicking me under the table to be quiet. She was sitting on this side of me, that, this last, on that trip, she was sitting on this side of me, and she kept on kicking me to be quiet. And then finally I couldn't take it anymore. When dessert came, I just said, do you realize what kind of example you're setting for these two fucking teenage kids, you fucking shit bags? And I was hoping either the young husband would get up or the old man would get up, because I was going to knock the shit out of him. But neither one, they just ignored me. Just like my chest, 96%. If I had spit on their old lady's face, that means they're what? They would have ignored me. And I said, you're an insult. You should have rolled down the insult. And I went on and on and on. And finally, security pulled me away and asked me to sit at another table, which used to happen when I was in my late 20s to my late 40s. I got asked to move tables in restaurants more than this old geezer's got gray hair. Because I, there's just only so much I can take. Now, growing up in that household, and some of you grew up in households like that, the kids don't have a chance. They spend 45 minutes, the old couple showing the young couple how to get three more days of statutory leave out of the government. What else about Mr. Balmer? Oh, yes, sir, you had a question. How does he, his management style, compare with uh, Jack Welch's? Jack Welch was not an alpha male. Uh, he was an introvert, 
a genius introvert, but an introvert. And he uh, was, other than the rank and yank methodology that he uh, developed quite, uh, uh, quite well, he um, learned, I believe because of his super intellect, um, how to get you through his leadership to do what he wanted you to do when he wanted and allow you to think it was your idea. Some people say he was a manipulator of personalities. I don't consider that manipulator of personalities. I, I consider that good, good uh, leadership, good management. Balmer is, now I've never seen Balmer throw a computer. I saw Jobs throw a computer, but I never saw Balmer. And, I, and Gates was an um, introvert, still is. Balmer was the opposite. And remember I told you, you've got to have somebody that's a hatchet man. Balmer was the hatchet man that uh, Bill brought in. And uh, he did a great job. And if you remember, and I'll refresh your memories, he didn't know anything about fucking computers. He was energetic. He used to jump up and down and perspire. And I, you know, n not this trip, but um, the one day seminar that I gave at the airport a year and a half ago or more. Um, when I got off the stage the day, uh, at six or whenever it was, you could wring my suit like this and water came out of it. I had to change clothes. Those of well, you weren't there, but anyway. When I sat down for dinner with Marcus, I had new clothes on because uh, I was sweating. Normally, um, if you had come to the last seminar when it was hot, I was sweating. And you know, if the last interview that I have at 6.30, if it ended early, I'd go up and change clothes because my suits would be um, wet because I'm energetic, and he's an energetic guy. and. Uh, well, we don't go through it anymore. We used to go through litigation, Microsoft litigation, and Obama says, uh, he's talking about the CEO of AT&T. I'm going to fuck him. This is the testimony. Mr. Bomber said, words, I'm going to fuck him where he breathes, and then I'm going to fuck his wife where she breathes. I've done it before, and I'm going to do it again. Or words to that effect. But you guys think that that's not, that's not the way it is. Believe me. Now, I saw Jobs throw uh, a computer at a, at a guy. And in those days, the big, you know, big computers, like this. Uh, I wasn't there when, uh, allegedly, Jobs tried to throw a programmer out a window, third-story window. These guys, it's, it's important to them. They understand when I say, if we were at war, kids, we'd all be dead. If we were at war, and we are at war. And you are financially dead for the most part. And that's why I show you that scene, which I, I take crap from, all the dead bodies. And when I look at your faces, the one that resonated the most with you, when they pull the dead body and, and she's holding a baby, that's when your face has changed. Before that, some of you thought this is a Pena stunt. But when they pull the, just out of the water a little bit, and with a little baby, that's when I hooked you. And that's why I use it. Did I answer your question about Balmer? Any other questions? Great manager, not, this, not, not, not uh, maybe a shade below Jack. Um, and Jack formed his own university in his last few years. Um, I never looked at the material. Uh, some of the guys that I know say it's pretty good material. Um, I don't know why Jack did that. Probably ran out of things to do in, in his later life. Married the girl that was writing a biography, which is kind of the thing to do now. You marry the, the, the girl. They're always 20, 30 years junior to you, and they're always cute. And so you marry, and you leave your wife at 45 years. Sally and I haven't been together 45 years yet. But uh, so uh, all the bi biographies coming out sooner than later. But uh, anything else about uh, Steve? A great model, though. The, um, but not necessarily for you, but somebody on that goddamn board better be like that. Now, s s some of you may ask when you're leaving and going to the airport the day after tomorrow, well, can you have more than one of those guys on the board? The answer is yes, but carefully. Because, you know, bulls will fight. And the, um, but um, 
I believe um, as long as you, the chairman, you, the chairman for you, is taking control of those guys in, in, in the corral, then you're okay. Uh, if you're going to be in control of them, you got a you got a problem. You have a military problem. Anything else about um, Steve? Okay, uh, YouTube. Good night. Uh, good, good, goodbye. Whatever. Now.